The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words, and my word is not my own. It is the word of the one who sent me. I have said all these things to you while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I've said to you. Peace I bequeath to you, my own peace I give you, a peace the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and shall return. If you loved me, you will have been glad to know that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I've told you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, saying goodbye, saying farewell to some people can become the only pleasure, the only joy that we have after a long, boring evening. We are happy to say goodbye. But saying farewell and saying goodbye to those whom we love, on the other hand, is often postponed. We postpone this farewell, this goodbye, for as long as possible. In the presence of some people, our life becomes larger, our life suddenly becomes richer. In the presence of other people, we pray for wings to make an exit. When the time comes for us to go, to let go of the ones we love, we usually find it very difficult. It is even harder when someone is dying. It's even harder. We mourn the dead, of course, we mourn the dead, and we wonder how we will manage without him or without her. We hope they will stay on because we are scared that when they go, our lives will crumble. We are scared of that. In today's Gospel, Jesus is aware of the deep anxiety of his disciples as they face the reality of that final departure. They are, the disciples are, who they are because of Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be nothing. They would not be who they were. So Jesus prepares them for the day of his departure, of his going. And the liturgy from today onwards will prepare us for the feast of the Ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit, the feast of Pentecost. So the promise of Jesus, I will give you the Holy Spirit. The promise of Jesus, I will give you peace. And he assures them, he reminds them, do not be afraid. 
The texts that we have in this reading of the Gospel today speaks about the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. In other places in the scriptures, we will call the Advocate the Paraclete. But in this text, we are reminded about the Advocate. And so, the Advocate simply means someone who will stands beside you, someone who assists you in dealing with what you are going through. So the Holy Spirit is sent to us to help us to make sense of the reality in which we are going through. So brothers and sisters, our lives, in our lives, there are moments where we cannot understand and we cannot make sense of. We are at the threshold, we are at this crisis of our lives and we wonder how am I going to deal with this crisis that I am facing. For some of us, we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray and nothing seems to be happening. And then we question, am I praying rightly or am I praying wrongly in the wrong way? Of course, when our hearts are set at the mercy of God, when our hearts are reaching out to God, then definitely we are praying the right way. No matter what our words are, words at this point of time really do not matter because the heart is connected to Jesus. When someone is dying and they are unable to speak, Words don't matter anymore. It's just the touch that matters, it's the presence that matters. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit, very difficult to explain and very difficult to understand. I explained the Holy Spirit to some of the primary school children and I explained it this way. The Holy Spirit, for the lack, lack of a better term of explaining, okay? Don't report me to the bishop, huh? Okay? The Holy Spirit is like Wi-Fi. You can't see Him, but you know you're connected to Him, and you know He is there, and you know you can access, you have access to Him. That is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. What are the crises in our lives? What are those? Many. For those of us who have been through real big crises, we look at the other, the teenager probably, or the younger person who is going through some form of crisis, and we say, oh, that small thing. That small thing. Of course, for us, it's a small thing because we've been through it. But for the other person, the young person or the teenager, that's a life-defining moment, a reversal in their life. And who is there to help them? Of course, if their relationship with their parents is good, then we have the parents as a support structure. But if the relationship is not so good in the house, where do they turn to? Probably when we were growing up, those of us who are on the other side of 50, when we were growing up, the support structure was the church. Was the church. But today, there are many voices which distract the young people. Many voices which distract the young people from this support structure. How do we hear the Spirit of God guiding us and leading us? in this place which is so noisy. How do we hear? We hear the Spirit of God leading us and guiding us if we are able to open our mind, to open our heart, to genuinely make a change in our lives. Now change is very difficult, no? Change is very difficult. 
Changing the furniture is not a problem. But changing our lives, changing our lives is a problem. How do I know what to do? I have to stop and listen. I have to stop and listen. It is only when I listen to the other person, then the beginning of change takes place in my life. Most of the time, change don't take place because I'm unwilling to listen to anybody else but me. So how can we hear the Spirit of God? So today, as we are introduced to the Spirit of God, we take this one step, this first step, to look at my life and see, is the Spirit of God truly part of my life or not or not where am I where am I in relation to the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not a dove not a triangle that we draw not that the Holy Spirit is truly present with us truly truly present am I allowing this Holy Spirit to guide my life for that is the promise of Jesus. I will give you the advocate. Someone who in my time of crisis, I can depend on, I can listen to, who is beside me to guide me. Those who listen to my word, my Father and I will love them and will come into their home. Those who listen to my word. Those who do not listen to my word, of course, I will not come. Because why? You have made a free choice, out of your own free choice, to move away from the prompting of God's Spirit. So, brothers and sisters, today, we have two more weeks, right, before Pentecost. So, let us begin with the first step getting to know the Spirit of God and the whereabouts of the Spirit of God. He is not far away. We are access he is accessible. We can access Him. He is around us. All we, do is, all we have to do is, to use computer language, click on. To click on and to stay connected to Him. Alright? Okay? Wonderful.